The first step is often the hardest and that can include building a start. You know you want to walk the path of an entrepreneur to seize your own destiny, become the next Zephyr and Cochran. But first, you need an idea for an app or a business. Over the past few months, I have consumed way too many videos and articles about how to come up with startup ideas, even at ChatGPT. Now in this video, I'm going to distill the tips and mindsets that have helped me the most. Without further ado, the first tip is to focus on solving problems and providing value. You don't want to end up as a solution in search of a problem or build a product that nobody wants. Or as Jeff Goldblum would say, Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. So instead of trying to come up with an idea or thinking about something that you can build, instead be noticing, exploring, and understanding real pain points that people are having so then you can go about solving them. Now, obviously there are a lot of pain points in the world, so it can help to narrow your focus. The second tip is to think about where you have an unfair advantage. What domains or industries do you already have a lot of experience in and would have a head start in understanding how to bring value to? This is not just about what exactly you do, in my job as a software engineer, I've worked in many different industries, from social media to education and game development. So in each of those industries, I have a head start in understanding the pain points and insight on how I might solve them. And it doesn't just have to be where you worked. It can also be where are you an experienced consumer? Maybe you spent a lot of time traveling or raising houseplants, even just as a hobby. Then you understand those domains and should be able to brainstorm and think about the pain points you've experienced there. Remember, creativity thrives under restrictions. It's going to be a lot easier to think about what are the pain points as a traveler than what are all the problems in the world that I could try to solve. If you are looking to just sit down and generate some ideas, honestly, this is probably the way to go. Think about all the different domains where you have experience. Then for each one, think what's terrible in this area or what do I wish was more awesome here? Also be thinking, what do people in this domain still use spreadsheets for? All right, along those same lines of narrowing your focus is tip three, who do you want to be creating value for? Justin Jackson gave an amazing talk at MicroConf, link in the description below. And he said, a great business isn't about you and your dream. It's about helping your customer achieve their dream. So don't start with an idea, but start with who you want to serve. Honestly, this is great advice and a real shift in mindset. Once you've identified those people that you want to be creating value for, now you know exactly who you need to be talking to and networking with as you continue to explore and dig up pain points that you can eventually solve. The next tip is don't be afraid of competition. Often you can be stuck in the trap thinking that if someone has already had this idea or has already built a similar product, that means you should just give up and stop pursuing it further. But very often successful businesses are not the first to market. Maybe they come second or even third. So the fact that there's someone else who has already identified this pain point and is working on it is a great sign that you're onto something and that you've discovered something real that you can also go about trying to solve. If there was literally no competition in this area you discovered, you need to stop and ask yourself, why is there no competition? Because it could be that the market simply isn't big enough to sustain a business here. Now, obviously that doesn't mean you should just pick the most crowded market and dive into the fray, right? You don't wanna be going up against Walmart or Amazon unless you have some sort of advantage that they don't. Step five is to make this a continuous process. You are not going to sit down for a few hours, write out a whole bunch of ideas, just pick one and that's it. Instead, you wanna be thinking about this and paying attention as you go about your life. For example, the other day, I had to take my car to the mechanic. And while I was there, I was looking for pain points, looking for opportunities to add some value. For example, I noticed, hey, there's still a lot of paperwork 
at this place and people have to write things down. Maybe there's opportunity to optimize that. So you want to make this a mindset that as you're living and being exposed to different stimuli, you're looking for those opportunities. And that mindset as everything is a muscle and something that gets better with practice, right? So as you're continually doing this, you're going to get better and better at noticing those opportunities. Finally, the last tip and probably the most important is don't wait until you have the perfect idea. There is no perfect idea and very likely the first few times that you try to go from an idea to actually building something, you're going to make mistakes, right? So instead of postponing that process, you wanna do it as soon as possible to get past those mistakes that you're going to make and learn from them. And so to help with that, I suggest starting small. You don't wanna start with something that's gonna take you years to build before you're able to go to market. Once you've identified the people you wanna be generating value for, find something small you can do to start doing that now. It doesn't even have to have the potential to turn into a business, but it's just one step on that path that gets you into the process of understanding this audience, of networking with them, going deeper in your understanding of how to generate value here. And then once you get that first step, you just continue to iterate. Now, because this is a slow iterative process of thinking of ideas, evaluating them, trying to take that first step, going back to the drawing board, there are other things you can be doing in the meantime. So when you do find something that's working, you're then able to capitalize on it. Things like building up your skills, whether that be in engineering or marketing or what have you. Practice building apps and bringing them to market quickly. Practice building landing pages. Practice validating your ideas. Be networking with people in your target audience, with other entrepreneurs, building up that network that can support you once you find traction. So I would suggest starting today. Find an idea. It doesn't have to be even a good idea, but think about once I have this idea, what are the next steps? Where do I go from here? Try to go through that process because you are going to learn so much by taking those steps. And then that learning is going to reinforce the ideas that you come up with. And it's actually going to lead to coming up with better ideas. So a quick recap, focus on solving problems and generating value. Narrow your focus by thinking about where you already have experience, thinking about who you want to serve. Don't be scared of competition. Make idea generation and noticing pain points a continuous process and start now by starting small. Understand that you're going to iterate. So those ideas have helped me immensely generating more and better ideas for potential startups. Now, obviously nothing on this topic can be definitive. So if you have other tips that have especially helped you, you can help out everyone here by leaving a comment below. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, watch out for tigers.